Hello everyone and welcome to another special holiday edition of The No Zone. I'm Charlie. And my name is Wanja. Now just as we promised, this week we have another fun packed show just for you. Now we're going to be revisiting some of the topics that we learned on The No Zone, including shopping and administration. So, do you remember any of the buzzwords? Counter. Change. Cashier. Supermarket. Price list. Officer. Chief. Secretary. Telephone. Provincial Commissioner. Now let's see how many of those buzzwords you can spot in the following episodes of Junction Juniors. stars and glitters. Excuse me? Actually, I think my card looks better. I used pieces of colored paper to make collage. Mine is the best. No, mine is better. That's not true. Let's ask someone else. Bakari, whose card is better? It's mine. It's mine. Juniors, we have things to do. Remember, we are doing this for the IDP children, not a competition. Sorry, Nita. I guess you're right. Yes, both our cards are good. I hope the children at the IGP camp like the Madaraka Day cards and gifts. They're coming out really nicely, you know? Yeah, it's such a great idea to make them something special for the national holiday. Yeah, even in the IGP camp, they're celebrating Madaraka Day. Thanks, everyone, for helping me make this day special for them. They've been in the IGP camp for so long. It's good they have something to celebrate. Most people in the IGP camp are afraid to leave their homes because they still feel it is unsafe. With these cards and biscuits to celebrate the Madaraka Day, the children have something great to look forward to. Hello, Brian. Uh, hello. How can I help you? I've come to buy biscuits for the Madaraka de Surprise, but I just can't decide which ones. Oh, really? What's the surprise? Uh, my friends and I saved our pocket money to buy biscuits for the children in the IDP camps. Ah, that's very good of you and your friends. Eh? I'm very happy to have you as my customer. Well, how much money do you have? Mm -hmm. Good, you've come to the right place, just the right place, okay? Now here is a price list for you, okay? You can decide how many biscuits you want to buy. When you decide, you get me over there at the cashier's counter, okay? Yeah, okay. Good. You forgot your change. Bye. James, stop it. You still have so much work left. These cards look lovely right now. How many more do we need to make? About 30 more and then we can go to the IDP camp and hand them out. I'm so excited about giving out the biscuits. This will be the best day of their lives. I was robbed. What? what? 
Who did this? Amos and Freddy. Not again. We promised the children a party. What are we going to do? We can't let them down. Wait a minute. I do not believe you. What did you do to the biscuits? Have you eaten them? James, how can you ask Brian such a question? Think about it. He's one who's always getting robbed. First by Babu, then by Amos and Freddy. He even cheated us that Snake did it once. We all know that Brian doesn't like sharing his biscuit. No, I will never do that. I promise. Okay, where's the receipt? All the change were given by the cashier. I'll prove you wrong, James. If someone comes with me, you can find those bullies and you'll see. Go find those bullies and come to. I'll also go, but the cards aren't finished yet. Oh, uh, you can go. I'll do the cards. On the right path. They must be close. You two, what have you done? Why did you steal those biscuits that Bran had? He had too many. We were teaching him to share. Those weren't Bran's biscuits. Those were for the children in the EDP camp. Mm. They had nothing special to celebrate Madaraka Day. So we are throwing them a Madaraka Day surprise. You stole from those two. Ah, it, it doesn't matter. Made them a long time ago. Yeah, we can't give them back. <laughs> Let's clean up this mess, <laughs> then we can go back to the Hayden. Come on, James, say it. Come on. What? I have nothing to say. Both of you have something to say to each other, and you have to say it now. Come on, James, you start. Brian, I'm sorry I didn't believe you. Junction Juniors, you need to trust in each other. It's OK. I forgive you. What are we going to do now? We don't have any biscuits to give. We still have the cards to give. James, Bakari and I made some very good cards. The children will love the cards. Actually, the kids won't want those cards. We promised them biscuits. And without those biscuits, you might as well not go. What are we supposed to do with these Madaraka de cards? Who would want them? My sister says that a card is very good for every occasion. Maybe we can give them out. That's it. I know how we can get more biscuits and get these cards out there. I have a plan. We can get these cards and sell them. What you get from these cards you can use to get more biscuits. We need to split up and sell as many as we can. Go Junction Juniors! Yay! We sold 12. My sister bought for all her friends. She promised to sell some as well. I sold 20. The supermarket man bought most of mine. Eh, me I sold 25. I think that now we have enough to give the children in the IDP camp a great Madaraka Day surprise. I knew we could always count on the Junction Juniors.
Understand. Just remember that decimals don't pass point nine. All right. Pass one. Officer. Spell it. O F F I C E R. Yay. What's wrong? Something bad is going to happen to the playing fields. Something really bad. What? My uncle works for a building company. His company has been paid to build large office buildings right at the top of the playing field. Building is going to start in 10 days. What? The playing fields. But when they build them, where will we play football? to panic. What else can we do? We can find a way to stop the offices from being built. What can we do to stop them? We are junction juniors. You can do anything. Listen, I have a plan. Babu, you need to go to the Saba Cafe and find the addresses of the provincial commissioner, the district commissioner, the district children's officer, the local education officer, and the chief. Write them down and bring them back so that you can start sending the letters of complaint. Lelete and Amishi, you both go to town and tell people what is happening. Ask them to send a petition saying that they don't want our playing fields destroyed. Try and get as many signatures as you can. Bakari, Go to Mze Barak and ask him for the old typewriter. Then bring it and see if you can fix it. And then we can tape out our letters and send them to the different officers. What else is there for me to do? Um, Brian, you can be secretary. What? I can't be secretary. That's a girl's job. <laughs> You'll be coming in a dress like other secretaries. With earrings, lipstick, and then you can job for girls only. It's an important job. Because I'm president for Junction Juniors, both of you will be secretary. Maybe uh, we'll learn something about gender equality. Ooh. I fixed it. It's ready to type. And I got all the addresses we need. And we got 50 signatures. But we can get lots more. Well done, everyone. Amisha and Leleti keep collecting the signatures while James and Brian write the letters. The rest of us can write the addresses on the envelopes and fill them with letters. Yeah, I get very time Hey, we are both secretaries. I get to use it fast. Nita told me. <clears throat> Stop it. Are we ready to save the playing fields? Yes! Go, Junction Juniors! Yes!
I E F. Good news, everyone! I just got six more signatures from my father's friends at the train station. That makes a total of 500 signatures. That's good. We have enough signatures now to stop the builders from building on. We've beaten the builders! Yay! I think it's time to share these signatures to one person who can really make a difference. Who? Our member of parliament. What? How are we going to find her? It said on the radio earlier that she's going to inspect our playing fields at exactly 5.30 today. That is exactly 12 minutes from now. Quick, let's hurry. Madam MP, can you speak to you for a moment? Please don't let this land be destroyed. It's the only safe place for children to play. It's every child's right to play in a safe environment. We have a petition. 500 people have signed it. Nobody wants to lose the playing fields. Hey, I recognize this handwriting. Have you been writing letters to all the people in this area protesting against the building? The education officer gave me the letter you sent her. I had not been told about the building, so I came to inspect that plot myself. Madam MP. Will you help us? But of course. I have spoken to the developers. The building will be built in another place that won't affect the community in a bad way. So, I guess the playing fields are still yours to enjoy. simple things can get if we all come together and work as one. Yes, I love the way the Junction Juniors came together and raised the money for the IDP children. It was very, very considerate. That's true. Time now for another lesson with Teacher Pendo in Hot Numbers. Hello everyone and welcome to Hot Numbers. Are you all ready to join in? Yes! Good, because today we are going to be learning about decimals again. Aww. Don't worry, everyone did so well last week. Now that you all know where to place the decimals in the place value chart, now let's look at the place value chart again to refresh our memories. Now you all remember this chart, don't you? Yes! Good. Now. This is the decimal point. To the left of the decimal point, we have the ones or the units, we have the tens, we have hundreds, we have thousands. To the right of the decimal point, we have the tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. Oh, yes, I remember now. 0 0.9 would be zero units and nine tenths. That's right. When adding decimals, it's the same as when adding whole numbers. Now, the most important thing is to line up your decimal points correctly. And also remember, we start adding from the place value on the right, okay? Yes! Who can give me some numbers? Yes, Mwaka? 0 0.3. Very good. So place is 0 0.3. So zero goes in the ones column. And we have the three in the tenths column. Now, someone else give me another number. Yes, Guy? 0 0.5. Uh-huh. So we have 0 0.5. Uh-huh. Zero goes in the units and five goes in the tenths. Very good. Now, let's add up this sum. Now, you need to remember that when adding the sum, you start adding from the place value on the right, okay? Yes! So, 3 plus 5 is 8. Mm -hmm. Now, remember to always line up your decimal point correctly. 0 plus 0 is 0. zero. Good. So, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.5 equals 0 0.8, okay? Yes! Now, let's try another one. Please help me clear the table. Good. So the next number is 2.46 plus 1.73. Now, who's going to place for me these numbers in the correct place value? You can do it. So place your 2.46. Mm -hmm. Here's a 4. 6. 
Uh huh. And we have the one. One. Here's a seven. Three. Good. So here's our additional sign. So we are adding 2.46 plus 1.73. Now remember, you always start adding from the place value on the right. So what is six plus three? Yes, Naipe? Nine. That's right. Mm -hmm. And which other numbers are we adding next? Four plus seven. That's right, we're adding four plus seven. So what is four plus seven? Yes, Gina? Eleven. Very good. Now, when your number is more than 10, you have to carry to the place value on the left. So we place the one that we've carried here and the other one here. So Marara, can you calculate for us the next sum? Oh yes, two plus one, and the one we carried, which is four. That's right. And remember to always line up your decimal point correctly. So 2.46 plus 1.73 equals... 4.19. The important thing you need to remember is... The decimal points always line up. Can I try one? Can I try one, teacher Peno? Can I try one? Sure. Ah. Why don't you try this one? Mm. 6.42 minus 5.37. Now who will help us place that in the place value chart? Please go ahead. So 6.42, you can all do it, you can all join in. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, and five, here's a five. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, very good. There we have it. Now, in this sum, we will have to borrow, and we will borrow from the place value to the left. Now, remember that you always start your sum from the place value on the right, okay? Okay, yeah. so two minus seven is, hey, that doesn't work. Is this where I borrow one? That's right. Now, we will borrow one from four, okay? Here is my one. So we will borrow one from four. Aha. Uh -huh. So the sum is now 12 minus seven is equals to five. Very good. So because we borrowed one from the four, what do we have now? Three. Uh -huh. Very good. So three minus three is zero. Very good. Uh-huh, and what about the last numbers? Oh, the last number. Six minus five, which is one. Mm-hmm, and we have a one, which means our answer is? One point zero five. Very good, well done. I really enjoyed that lesson, and I hope you enjoyed it too, because right now we're going to take a short break. But make sure you don't miss Maspidi in one of his exciting trips in out there. Shake your Welcome back. Now, do you enjoy tasty trips? If you do, come with us. <laughs> Hello, people. I've come shopping to buy some, oh, oh, oh no. I've forgotten my shopping list, oh dear. I'll just have to try and remember what I need. Oh, at least I have my pocket money with me. Come on. Biscuits, my favorite. Oh, and, and some more biscuits. Look, oh, oh no, just, just a few more. I love biscuits, don't you? I can't wait for the cashier to finish serving that customer so that I can start testing my favorite biscuits. 
wonder how they make biscuits. I've come to the famous house of Manji to find out how they make their biscuits. Follow me and find out their secrets. My friend Mr. Simba tells me that first of all, they mix all the ingredients to make a dough. Although you can buy many different types of biscuits from the supermarket shelves, they are all made in the same way. Once the ingredients have been mixed into a nice soft dough, it is poured out and taken to another big machine where it will be rolled flat by the big rollers. It's very important to wear protective clothing when you are near food. We must be hygienic at all times. Oh, look! Can you see the dough mixture being shaped into biscuits? It's amazing! <laughs> now, the biscuits are ready to roll into the hot oven to be baked. Mmm, they smell good. The oven bakes the biscuit at just the right temperature to give them that golden touch. Oh, I must try one. They look so good. Ouch! Oh! <sighs> they are hot! All the biscuits are checked to make sure they are perfect. Any broken pieces are removed while the good ones continue on their journey to be packaged. Biscuits are all wrapped up and put into their boxes. They are ready to go into the shops to be bought by hungry customers. So now you know how biscuits are made. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I've started eating without paying. Oh, whoops! <laughs> Here is my money. Biscuits are just so tasty. Don't you agree? Those biscuits looked so delicious. That's right. Now, do you remember that child helpline that we gave you last week? Let's join Maspidi and remind ourselves of that very important number. Can you guess what is out there today? I've come to Westlands Primary School in Nairobi. I have something very important that I want to talk to the pupils about. Follow me, come on! Hey, what's, what's wrong? Leave me alone! <laughs> Hi! Hi! Wow, you're looking good, eh? What are you people on about? We are rehearsing as kids. Wow! Come, come, come. Let's see what this kit is all about. OK, let's continue with our rehearsals. <laughs> hey, why are you crying? Stop it. Leave her alone. Anne's stepfather mistreats her. And she's even planning to run away. And you kept quiet? You should have reported to the police station. But I promise not to tell anyone. Hey, let's finish our rehearsing. We'll get home late. What if this is really happening to kids out there? What's the solution? That is a good question. OK, listen up. Did you know that many children are abused every day? Child abuses range from corporal punishment, sexual harassment, child labor, and the rest. What's the solution then? What can we do to help? Report to the police. Tell the teacher. Or the chief. All those people need to know about it. But there's also one other thing that you need to know about. Uh -huh. Let's dial this number and get to know what it's all about. Eh? 
Thank you for calling Child Helpline. How may I help you? Uh, this is my speedy and his friends, eh? We wanted to know this number 116, what it's all about. Okay, thank you for calling my speedy. Child Helpline 116 is an emergency service for children providing telephone counseling. This is a service where children can call when they're in problems and we can also refer them to essential service providers, for example, the assistant district officer and the medical officers who work hand in hand to assist children who have been abused. Thank you, counselor. We've learned a lot. Thank you so much for calling Maspidi and feel free to report any cases of child abuse. This are the 116 offices. Now you know that 116 is the number that children can call to get help. The people who work here are all trained in helping deal with child abuse. The call center has many different counselors who are on standby waiting for phone calls from children who are being abused. The counselors offer help, support, and even parental advice over the telephone. The kind people at 116 can help with many types of problems, such as sexual abuse, being beaten or hurt by an adult, getting pregnant, and many other things. When a child calls 116, the secretary types all the information on a computer and keeps it in a file just in case they need to refer to it later on. No matter what your problem, if you call 116, you will receive help and be treated with great kindness. Didn't we learn a lot? Yes! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Now, children out there, if you know of any child who is being abused, or if you yourself are being abused, then 116 is the number to call. Call this number any time, and there'll always be someone on the other side of the line to help you. 116 is not just a number. Call and get help. As I always tell you, it's very important to note that number down. Oh, don't worry, Charlie. We never get tired of learning here on the Nose Zone because it's always fun. Hey, speaking of learning, why don't we go and join Teacher Pendo for more fun in the Learning Zone? there and welcome back to Cool Words. Are you all ready to learn? Yes! Great. Now today we are going to look up the spelling rule for past tense verbs ending in Y. But first, who can remind us what a verb is? Oh, I can, I can. Yes, Marara? A verb is a doing word. That's right. A verb is a doing word or an action word. Now, who can give me some examples of verbs? Yes, Muragwa? Running. Running. To run is a verb. Someone else? Yes, Sumaya? Jumping. Jumping. To jump is a verb. Anyone else? Yes? And walking. Walking. To walk is a verb. Well done, all of you. And now that we know what a verb is, who can remind us what past tense means? Oh, oh, oh. Again. Yes, Marara? A past tense verb is a doing word that you add ed because it is something that has already happened. Well done. So a past tense verb is an action word that has already happened. Okay? Yes. Now give me a sentence with a past tense verb. Yes, Mukonyo? This morning I looked at a book. Well done. So looked is a past tense verb. Let's try this one. Today, I walk down the streets. Now, what's the past tense? Yesterday, I walked down the street. I was right. You added ed to walk to make it past tense. So it becomes walked. That's right, Marara. Now, today, I want us to look at some other verbs that have a different spelling pattern when they become past tense because they end in y. Now, who can give me examples of verbs that end in y? Yes, Juma? Try. Try. Yes, Mohia? Cry. Cry. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Sumaya? What about Kari? Kari, that's right. Mari. Mari, well done, all of you. Now let's put these verbs into past tense sentences. Are you ready? 
Yes. Now to the first sentence. We would say, today I try to tie my shoelaces, but yesterday I tried to tie my shoelaces. Now try this one. Today I cry because my head hurts. Now who can turn that into past tense? Oh, me, me teacher. Pen, yes, teacher. Marara. Now today I cry because my head hurts. Yesterday I cried because my head hurt. Well done, Marara. Now let's look carefully at the spell of the past tense verbs okay so try tried cry cried do you notice what has changed oh, oh yes I can uh-huh you have added ed but there's something else that has changed look carefully so try tried cry cried what else has changed? Oh, 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 yes, I see, I see. Yes, Marara? The Y has changed to an I. That's right. And the spelling rule is when you're changing a verb that ends in Y into past tense, you first change the Y into an I and then add the E-D. So? Change the Y into an I before adding ED. Brilliant. Now, who would like to have a go at changing some verbs that end in Y into past tense? Now, here is our first sentence. Today, I carry my bag to school becomes... Yes, Muragwa? Yesterday, I carried my bag to school. Aha! Well done. You remember the rule? Change, Change the, the Y into an I before adding ED. E That's right. So, carry becomes? Carried. Well done. Now, let's try another one. Today, I marry my sweetheart. Oh, Shapendo. Do you really? Oh, Mara, this is just an example, okay? <laughs> so what is the past tense of this sentence? Yes, Sumaya? Yesterday I married. Mm-hmm, that's right. So yesterday I married my sweetheart. So can we all repeat the rule again? Change the Y into an I, I before adding ED. E well done, all of you. You now know the rule, don't you? Yes! Shake your Welcome back. Now, after that revision, why don't we go for more fun in the art zone? So don't go anywhere because immediately after that, we will join our spelling champions in Spell It. Hi kids, welcome to another session of Art Zone. Guess what? This is not a real box. This is paper. And in Japanese, they call it origami. So what we need first, nice colored paper. Okay, so this is the square. From here again, I divide the paper into a smaller triangle. So I open it up, open one of the triangles, and inside here, press it down. So we are always making triangles and squares, triangles and squares. Which can I put this area and open up again and press it down? So, kids, open it up again and fold it into half. Place it down, and again, open the two sleeves, this side, squeeze them in, squeeze that end in, and this other end again, in. And we have a triangle. It looks like a tent now. Fold it again, the triangle, fold both sides. Okay, again, fold this other side. Okay, and so it's, it's come back again to a box. Fold again. Turn it over. Fold again. And then I get to fold it. It's two folds like this. I turn over and fold again the other way around. And if this fold is not straight, 
you end up not getting a straight edge like this. So now, to hold it together, like the glue, open this small triangle here and slide this small bit. Fold it in, in like in a pocket. This other side again, slide it in. And again, fold it and put it in the pocket. Turn over, there's a pocket here. Take this side, slide it in, and fold it here. Open up, it looks like an X, and there's an opening somewhere up here. This one here, you can blow through. Nice. And the ribbon now, just a small piece, tie the ribbon. So well kids, this is my box. And remember, you can make more shapes and creatures using paper. And I hope you'll try and make one. And see you next time on Artsal. Animal, animal, chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 work, work. Welcome to Spell It. Sumaya, Muragwa, and Ami Levy. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light to compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion, in which the winner will go home with their very own Nozon Dictionary. Each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat, and it will be repeated for you. Now, each word is worth one point, so the more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Samaya, so you're up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. So Maya, your 30 seconds start now. File. F-I-L-E. Abuse. A-B-U-S-E. Field. F-I-E-L-D. Chief. C-H-I-E-F. Support. S-U-P. S U W P O T E Cabinet C A C A R B I N E T Command C O C O M A N D Time is up. up. Good. Well done, Samaya. Muragwa, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Ragua, your 30 seconds start now. Call. C O L E. <laughs> Help. H E L P. Build. B I U L D. <laughs> Office. O W -F, F I C E. Station. S C A T I O N. Computer. C O M P U T E R. Convict. C O N V E C T. <laughs> Secretary. S E C R E T A R Y. Punishment. P U N I S H M E N T. Appropriate. A W P R O P A M. Time is up. Well done. Well done. Please step back. Ami Levy, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Ami Levy, your 30 seconds. Start now. Save. S A V E. Type. T, -T Y P E. Guilt. G G I L T E. <laughs> Assist. A W S I T S T. <laughs> Report. R E P O R T. Leader. A L E D A W L E A D E R. Concern. C C O N C E R. <laughs> Province. P R O V. Time is up. Well done. Well done. Well done. That was a tense edition of Spell It. I won't prolong the stress. We'll get straight to the results. Now, you've all spelled very well. 
but there must be a winner, and that can only be one person today. So in joint second place, with a total of four points, we have Sumaya and Amilevi, which means our winner, with a total of six points, is Muragwa. Let's give her a round of applause, everyone. Well done. Congratulations, Muragwa. You are today's No Zone Spell It Champion. Well done. Show everyone your dictionary. Another round of applause, everyone, please. Woo! Very good. Congratulations to all of you. That's right. Now that was an excellent competition. I love the creativity in Art Zone. But now it's time for us to go and revisit the adventures of Ranger Rukia on Wild Zone. But first, let's treat ourselves to an interesting story in African Tales. Hello everyone, I hope you're sitting comfortably. I'm going to tell you a story about a family of chameleons who have a very stressful day. I hope you enjoy it and don't forget to look out for this week's buzzwords. It happened one night as the wind blew and the clouds crept in, as the thunder roared and the lightning flashed and the rains came flooding in. One by one, the animals of the forest ran into caves and dens, all seeking refuge from the heavy showers. Even the birds of the sky sat perched in their nests, protecting their little ones and waiting for the dawning of a bright and sunny day. And so, when morning finally came, and with it the glow of the warm sun, the animals returned to the fields, dancing with good cheer. Life had gone back to normal, or so it seemed. Rangi, oh Rangi. Mr. Chameleon, who was horned and as green as the leaf he stood on, had climbed to the top of a baobab tree to look for his son. Again, he cried out, Rangi, where are you, Rangi? His voice echoed through the hills and plains, but sadly, he heard no reply. Rangi, oh Rangi! On the ground below, Mrs. Chameleon was also searching for Rangi, but no matter how hard she looked, she couldn't find him. Poor Mrs. Chameleon sighed with frustration. Oh. Just then, Mama Porcupine strolled by. Excuse me, Mrs. Chameleon began. But have you seen my baby, Rangi? He's been missing since the terrible storm. Mama Porcupine thought for a moment and then said, Chameleons are always very hard to find. You need professional help. Why don't you ask the chief? I am sure she will be able to find him. I will stay and keep searching for Rangi here. And so they set off on a long, slow walk. And eventually they arrived at the chief's office. Excuse me, Mr. Chameleon called out. A small squirrel looked from behind his desk and the chameleon parents explained to him their problem. Oh, dear, the squirrel replied when they had finished telling him the sad story. I am very sorry, but I am not the chief. I am the secretary. The chief is already out on duty. Seeing how saddened the chameleons were, the squirrel added, Perhaps, hmm, you should report it to Zimzim. -zim the police officer. He is the best police officer in the entire animal kingdom. Filled with a new hope, the chameleons left the chief's office and headed towards the police station. I hope Randy didn't get washed away by the terrible storm. We may never find our son, Mrs. Chameleon said as they walked along a path where scary looking hawks and eagles hovered above looking for tasty lizards and mice to eat. Soon they arrived at the police station. Excuse me, 
Mr. Chameleon called out. And Zim Zim, the zealous zebra, looked up from his fire. How can I help you? Zim Zim asked. Sir, we've lost our baby Rangi and we can't find him anywhere, Mrs. Chameleon replied. For how long has Rangi been missing? Zim Zim asked. He has been missing since before the break of dawn. It was almost noon now, so Zim Zim said to them, Take me to the place you were last with him. And right away, the chameleons directed him towards the grand baobab tree. This is where we last saw him, Mrs. Chameleon said. By this leaf. Zim Zim looked at the brown branch of the tree. Hmm. As he saw a brown little lump curled under a leaf. Your baby is not missing as he gently nuzzled the brown little lump. He is sleeping. And suddenly, the brown lump moved. It was baby Rangi, sleeping upside down and as sound as can be. Rangi opened his big eyes and looked around. He yawned and then said, I, I, had a very nice dream. I remember rain pouring and hearing everyone calling out to me. Mrs. Chameleon smiled with joy as she cuddled her little boy. Mr. Chameleon smiled to Zim Zim. What else can we say except thank you for reuniting us with our baby son? The end. Wasn't that a lovely story? I am so glad they found baby Rangi. Chameleons are so difficult to see. Anyway, that's all we have time for. So goodbye. Nose on Rangers, I am Ranger Rukia and today we are going to meet some very interesting animals, African buffaloes. Buffaloes are large mammals that are related to the domestic cow, but they are bigger than cows. Just like cows, buffaloes like to eat a lot of grass. Both female and male buffaloes have large horns. Buffaloes live together in herds. Sometimes, there can be more than 1,000 buffaloes in a herd. Imagine that. Buffaloes always live close to water. They need to drink water regularly in order to survive. They also enjoy wallowing in water to keep themselves cool. These little white birds are called egrets. They eat the flies that annoy the buffaloes. Buffaloes and egrets are very good friends. Can you see the little birds sitting on the buffalo's back? They're called oxpeckers, and they eat the insects that annoy the buffalo. Many people think that buffaloes are dangerous creatures. This is only true when buffaloes are sick or afraid. They can charge predators at a speed of up to 50 kilometers an hour. Buffaloes can use their horns as weapons to fight each other, as well as animals like lions that might want to attack them. They also use their horns to protect their young cows from lions and hyenas. Only the lion would be brave enough to attack a buffalo. Because many people fear them, buffaloes are often hunted and killed by humans for their skins, meat, and horns. However, when humans treat buffaloes with respect and leave them alone, they are very gentle and peaceful animals who are an important part of our wild world. That's all for now, Nose on Rangers. Until next week, take care of our wild world. Bye!
ranger Rukia always makes my day. I mean, she has so much fun being a ranger. I know, because she gets to spend all this time with different animals every day. That's right. Now, sadly, we've come to the end of the show. But don't worry, we'll be back next week for more fun and learning right here on the No Zone. Until then, Goodbye. bye!